Hey everybody, it's Peter here with GoodyReader.com. Today we're going to give you guys a review of the Asus or Asus Mimo Pad Smart 10.1 inch. This one just came out the last week of February, uh, early March kind of thing. It's a 10.1 inch screen, 1280 by 800 IPS panel touchscreen. It actually features a 1.2 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad core processor. So this is going to be a really fast tablet for a really low price. 1 gig of RAM, 16 gigabytes internal storage with a micro SD card slot, 5 megapixel camera on the back, 1.2 megapixel camera on the front. Let's look at the back first. Asus, or Asus, we'll just call it Asus for the remainder of this video. Two speakers, one on each side, rear-facing camera. On the left here, we have volume up and down, 3.5 mil headphone jack. Clean top all the way to the standby slash power button. Then over here we have a uh, micro USB and a micro HDMI. Also have a microphone. And we have a micro SD card slot. Clean bottom. And on the front we have our front facing camera with light sensor. So during this review, once we dive into the software, we're going to look at various things such as e-reading, magazines, newspapers, a little bit of media, some games, and a lot more, so stay tuned. Looking at the home screen, you're not noticing anything out of the ordinary. It's just a very basic Android Jelly Bean operating system. You see that you have all the icons, and you have live wallpapers, widgets, and so forth. So you're not going to see any skinned version like you would see on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or Kobo with tapestries and carousels and all that kind of stuff. You're just seeing a bare-bones version. And all these things on here, like Sonic and Comixology and Press Reader, we actually loaded those on. So those won't actually come with it. But you do get some things like YouTube, Gallery, Play Music, Play Store, and so forth. First thing we're going to look at is the e-reading experience. We're going to go to Playbooks. This is Frankenstein. Um, we have it in two-page view. You can turn it to one-page view if you like. You see that there's page animations. Not quite like turning the page by pinching it uh, like you would see on Apple iPad. It's more like you're actually doing what you're doing on the tablet screen. You're kind of pushing the page sliding it along the page behind it. Uh, you get nice peak features and um, it's all very fluid and very smooth. Tapping in the middle opens up all your menus. You can actually start off by clicking original pages. What this will do is change it to the way the book actually looks from what it was scanned. Now this only works on scanned books from Google. But for the sake of this review we'll use flowing text. If you press the font size you can change the themes night and day. It does refresh the whole t uh, every time, so beware. So we'll go back to day. You also have typefaces, text alignments, brightness, so you can automatically choose, uh, you manually choose the brightness or automatically adjust the brightness, font size, and line spacing. So most of these will change live Sometimes it'll wipe away the screen and you have to redo it, but e-reading experience is very simple. You have very simple text augmentation. You can see here, it's very fluid. I know back in the day, um, I say back in the day, I mean a couple years ago, we would always compare and judge page turn speeds because we handled a lot of tablets that are trying to do too much with too little, like... Uh, Android 3.0 device with a 800 megahertz processor. So we would really put page turn speeds on the on the the podium and really judge what you know, how fast it actually moves and whether it bogs down the machine. Not really a factor anymore. It's very smooth. In fact, it can handle full animations like this now. So um, not really a factor. Needless to say, it is a very nice e-reading experience, except for this feature right here, read aloud. I afterwards learned that, knowing my father's advanced age and unfitness for so long a journey, and how wretched my sickness... Oh my god, that is awful. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, 
there's a lot of e-reading applications that do it better, and there's a lot of tablets that do it better. So, um, yeah, yikes. Uh, it's, it's very robotic. It doesn't really... It's not very pleasant to listen to, and there's no emotion in the things they say. It's just very... Uh, it's really bad. I, I don't recommend it unless you actually absolutely have to use it. So that's pretty much the e-reading experience. Very simple. What we're going to do next and look at a newspaper. So we have the Vancouver Sun and the National Post. We're just going to open the Vancouver Sun. This does look better in portrait mode, but for the sake of this review, we will keep it in landscape. You'll see here that this is the newspaper, just like you would read it with advertisements and all. You'll see everything from cosmetic ads to classifieds to car ads and you'll see stuff like you would see in the actual newspaper because this is the actual newspaper crosswords weather and so forth pinching and zooming is very easy so if you can't quite get that sweet spot just zoom in much like you would if you're holding the newspaper closer to your face except this actually makes the text text a lot smoother so, very simple to read, and if you want to, you see how this is pretty much unreadable. If you actually tap on any of these blue articles you see, what it does is actually zooms in and reflows it much like an ebook. A little bit laggy, but it gets the job done. So, you can read comfortably, and you do have text options in the corner as well. Let's click on that. Come on. There we go. So you have font styles and font size. So very simple. And you can go back to page if you like. So this is the newspaper experience. Very simple. Looks really good on this tablet. Not quite as good as other 9 to 10 inch tablets such as the Apple iPad. There's really no comparison. This is 1200 by 800 resolution. iPad is 25 hundred by uh, 1600 or so so it's almost double this but um, for the price this isn't actually a bad screen it's a little bit glary and a little bit reflective but other than that the images are very clear next let's look at magazines so we're gonna go to play magazines and we'll look at an issue of wired this is a issue of Wired we actually purchased from Amazon. So you'll see here. Once again, this is the real magazine. So what you're going to get is advertisements, articles, and pretty much anything else you'd see in the actual magazine itself. We notice that when we, if you watch our comparisons versus the iPad and the Amazon Kindle Fire, there's a lot of problems when it comes to viewing magazines on this device. It seems to have a lot of problems with catching up and loading, even though the entire magazine is downloaded. A lot of the time you get just load screens, and when you turn pages, sometimes half the page is black, and it just kind of... It's very choppy. It's not a very fluid experience, especially for a quad-core tablet. One would think that it would be a lot smoother. But it isn't. So let's go over to an article. You can see here, I'm not even turning pages that quickly, and it's pretty much struggling to catch up. So we can do pinching and zooming. All the text renders itself, so don't worry about it getting blurry. It will, it will uh, sharpen. It's very smooth when you go to pinch and zoom, but when you change pages, it does seem to struggle a little bit. And there's not much you can really do to augment any of the text. But you can zoom in. So this is the magazine experience on the Asus Mimo Pad. Very slow. If you click on play music, what it's going to do is open up the music player. Now, we're in Canada, so we don't actually get any music. You can see here, if we go to the Play Store, you get apps, books, magazines, and movies. We actually don't get music or newspapers in Canada. We had to use Press Reader to show you newspapers, and now we're using Play Music to let you guys listen to music. It, there's not much to this. Like I said, you can't. we don't have access to music in Canada, so we can drag and drop music to this device via our computer. 
but we can't download or buy any music directly on the device. Although we can hold up to, I believe, 20,000 songs in storage on the device. So let's click on this and just listen for a sec. Very clear speakers, very loud speakers. The only issue I probably have with them is that on a flat surface, such as this table, they do get a little muffled. Reason being, they're flat on the back. They're not like the Apple iPad that, although the Apple iPad has one speaker, it's curved on the thumbnail bind of the device, whereas this is just flat on the back. Given that, it does still pack a mean punch and it is not only loud but it is very clear very crisp and there's quite a bit of bass along with it since majoritively we're trying our best to view stock content that is just preloaded on the device or things we can get from its ecosystem like play store unfortunately we had to use press reader for the newspaper we're going to look at what we have for videos here we have a preloaded video which should be optimized for the tablet. Video player. Just this once. Once again, the audio is great and the picture is great as well. And this, Im this video is perfectly optimized for this tablet, 10.1 inch screen. So you can see that even with an HD footage like this, it is, it's perfect and it's very smooth and there's no lagging whatsoever. Even though we have all this stuff open, everything we've ever touched so far is still running in the background. Uh, comics, YouTube, Google Play Movies, uh, our App Store, browser, everything is still there until we actually swipe it away to kill it. Now, even though everything's running, it's running smoothly because it has a quad-core processor and nothing's really going to bog this guy down. Final thing we're going to look at before we move into Google Play Store and a brief overview of that is gaming. We're going to use Sonic Episode 2 because this is a game that is live rendering for the most part except for maybe the f the very far background and it's uh there's a lot going on on the screen so we're going to try our best and uh show you guys this see the audio got louder the second i picked it up so sure yes Sonic Go! So you can see, even with everything kind of going on at once... Alright! 
So, even with everything still open, that game ran rather smoothly. It just goes to show you how far a quad-core processor goes. A lot of tablets are incorporating quad-core processing now. Um, Google Nexus 7, even phones like the Nexus 4, uh, and just uh, my, my, my beautiful and much-loved Fujitsu smartphone from uh, Docomo. Love it. Quad-core. Uh, honestly, I think um, it's becoming more affordable now, and it just it makes such a big difference when you're doing things, especially on a, a tablet com compared to other things. Because I mean, it's such a big screen. There's a lot going on. You have a lot of apps running. I mean, it's better to just have a better processor and better hardware. Last thing we're gonna look at is the Play Store. This is how you're going to get all your content: apps, books, magazines, and movies. So let's just click on apps and see what we have here. This is a default screen. Unlike Apple, where you can slide everything left and right and on the main screen and the featured list at the top, they do present things a little bit differently. Everything's very gridded. Sometimes there's uh, advertisements and special offers, much like you can see here with discounted stuff and the latest and greatest uh, books and music and all that. To get to any specific category, you can either search or you can go and slide left and right. and You'll see top paid, top free top grossing, top new paid, etc. So let's click on uh, Simpsons Tapped Out just to take a peek here. So you have the several pictures up top for the um, uh, in-game pictures and promo pics and all that. Description, star rating. Looks like most people like this. I love this game. Users also viewed, users also installed, and then information on the left. So, all in all, the tablet ranges from $299 to $329 plus taxes and eco fees and all that, depending on where you buy it from. It's a quad-core processor, it has a gig of RAM, it's got 16 gigabyte of storage, and you can put an SD card into it, up to 32 gigs. So, there's a lot you can do with this tablet, and it is very affordable, and it packs a punch. It, ha it is Android, so that means you can both download applications from Play Store because it is Google certified or you can actually utilize our Goody Reader App Store if you would like to do so which I highly recommend and you can sideload content in as well if that's something you want to do because Android allows you to do that unlike Apple where you have to go through iTunes and you have to be kind of locked into dealing with the App Store you can actually sideload things onto this drag and drop um, content onto it you can even use it as storage as a removable disk on your computer so there's a lot you can do with Android a lot you can do with a quad core tablet and just a lot you can do with affordable tablet so if you guys like this video if you don't like it if you have comments if you don't have comments well watch it anyways comment anyways let me know if I missed anything let me know if you guys have any opinions uh, look at our other 560-ish videos on youtube.com slash goodyreader and go to apps.goodyreader.com for all your Android and BlackBerry applications. And for Goody Reader, everyone, this is Peter.